सुस्वागत राजयोग गेन मास्टर ऑफ द माइंड वॉट कैरेक्टराइज माइंड कंपेर्ड टू इंटरनेट द माइंड हेज द विल पॉवर इंटरनेट हेज द पॉवर ऑफ अनालिसिस इट्स हाउ दे आर डिस्टिंग्विश So in Raja Yoga, we use our will power to gain mastery over the mind. We all have the freedom, that will power, to bring the mind to concentration, or bring it to the focus, or take it to the level of dhyana, or. Take it to the higher levels of consciousness by samadhi. We have that will power. Therefore, the Patanjali gives these dimensions of Raja Yoga in very accurate, systematic process as to how to gain mastery over the mind. When the mind is too haphazard. It gets totally uncontrolled. What is to be done? That person is addressed by Patanjali. By indirect ways, you have to control the mind. He says, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara. Once you have some control, as all of us have, then you go to direct control over the mind. Dharana. Dhyana Samadhi. I remember about 30 years back, one of the workers from Hindustan Aeronautics came to me and told, "Sir, I have lost all my concentration. I don't know what to do." He said, "What do you mean? I return home from my work. I just want to relax. I just sit and want to read." Something very interesting. So at that time in Canada, it was made Chandamana, Chandamama, and Barmitra. Simple story, kind of. So I start reading the Chandamama, beautiful pictures and all that. I read the first sentence, and by that time the mind goes away somewhere else. Oh, my wife had told that I had to go to that market and bring this vegetables and other things. And then this happened, this happened, went on and on and on. And how far away the mind is all? Then I start thinking, I have forgotten what I have read. I sit in front of the book, but I cannot read even three sentences in one hour. What to do? What to do? When mind is in such a state. What is to be done? Arjun also asks Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, you are telling about big things. You are talking about dharana, dhyana, samadhi, and several other things. No. But to what? Our mind. Chanda dhamhi mana Krishna, pramadhi bala vadrudham. The mind is so happy, sir. Chanda la, chanda la, chanda la. Like a monkey mind, jumping, jumping, jumping round. No. I don't know how to deal with that. So, Krishna Bhagwan gives the trick. Yeah, what to say is right, hundred percent right. Asam shayam mahabaho mano turnikraham chalam. His mind is like the wind, vayori vasudushtram. It jumps here and there, here and there. That is the nature of mind in its gross state. You are very right. Very difficult to control. What is happening? Correct. But there is a way to overcome that. There is a methodology to deal with that. There is the tools to gain mastery over the mind. And what are those tools? What are those secrets by which you can control the mind? Abhyaase na dukam teya vairan ye na jagrutyate. What is meant by abhyasa? Practice. Doing the practice again and again. Tantrasthitau yatnaha abhyasa. Patanjali 
defines what is abhyasa. Abhyasa is to do the things again and again and again and again and again. And you must use that willpower to work on this. And therefore every day morning we come here, 78 we sit here and chant Bhagavad Gita, try to understand the meaning and try to meditate for a short while and bring the abhyasa. Practice is most important. So gradually the system will change and it will adjust itself. A new habit of the mind to come under the control comes up. And this is how the Patri and the Krishna Bhagavan gives us the solution. Abhyasa. Then the second dimension is Vairagya. Vikataha Radha Yasmin Saviragi. Tasya Bhavha Vairagyam. That's how the Bhutpati of the word Vairagya comes. Vikataha Radha. The attractions, the rush of the sensor towards the sense object, the desires in the mind, called the Raga. Raga and the Dvesha are the two dimensions of emotion that we are seeing. When the mind goes on thinking about the same thought again and again and again and again, there develops the attachment, we saw. How oh, there is a connection between the thinking and the feeling, thinking and the emotions, thoughts and the emotions we saw. By repeat and thinking, you get into the beginning of all emotions called the Sangha, attachment. From attachment comes Raga and Vesha. So, the Raga is the one that makes our mind go out of our control. Raga and Vesha. Therefore, what Bhagavan Sri Krishna is telling is, Vigataha Raga, that Raga should go away. That you should be not enslaved by the emotions. So, once you start working at this level to reduce the Raga, then the mind starts coming under control. Another way of doing that is change your attraction to sense pressures to things which are divine. Therefore, you have your Ishtadevata or your role model in which you go on repeating that again and again. This is what Hanuman did. Ram, 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 Ram. Went on doing the Japa from. That's called Japa. And when you start doing that, you are Ishtadevata, the mind gets into that particular thought continuously and you start getting the control over the mind. <laughs> By an understanding, the key feature of Vairagya is understanding. You must understand that happiness is not an object of enjoyment, but it is an inner state of mind. It is in the state of mind featured by silence. There is a wonderful analysis of happiness. And that happiness analysis in the Taitri operation called the Ananda Vimamsa tells us that what you think about happiness is wrong. What all do we think? Happiness in objects of enjoyment. The things that I like. I get the object of choice, I become very happy. I like gulab jamun, therefore I get gulab jamun, I eat, I'll be very happy. Therefore I control happiness in gulab jamun. But the Gnana Yoga asks you to analyze whether it is so. What is that to ask? It's simple. It's our experience. So why should we analyze? This is where the Gnana Yoga takes to the higher level. This is what science tells us. Newton had seen, all of us had seen, and all people, millions have seen the apple falling down from the apple tree. Nobody questioned it. What is so special? <coughs> but Newton asked the question, 
Why should I ever fall down? He asked. Even when we asked this question, we have a suitable answer. But it's not like apple became very ripe, or the connection of the apple to the tree was cut by a bird or something happened. Therefore, it fell down. What is so special about it? Then you ask more simple question. Okay, the apple has become ripe, or the cut has been done. So it doesn't have a support, but why should it fall down? Why should not the apple go up? No. Look at the security of the question. Though it is the normal experience, the science says you have to question to the depth. And Newton was able to unravel the theory of gravitation by that. Similarly, our ancient seers, the Upanishadic seers, the great yoga masters, unravel the mystery of happiness. They said that you must understand what really is happiness. Happiness is not contained in objects of enjoyment. Why? The first one of Jammu gives you happiness. Then take the second one, the third one, the fourth one. What happens? Will the happiness increase? You have got 100 rupees note, you put the second one, the third one, fourth one, the value goes on increasing. Similarly, when you repeat, if really happiness was contained in Gulab Jamun, it should all increase. But the simple fact is, it is going to come down. It follows the law of diminishing returns. What one person likes, that person doesn't like. I may like gulab jamun, I may like raskula, I may like masala dosa, etc. Very from person to person. The third argument is that what one community likes, another community doesn't like. What one person in one country likes, another person doesn't like. An interesting thing happened. 40 years back I was traveling in a train from Kanyakumari to Delhi. And I had two young Japanese who were traveling with me. And during lunch time, we got nice lunch, shatabdi, and we started taking food. By that time, they took out some bottle from their bag, and they started taking out something. I was also looking at it. They asked, would you also share? Would you like? They asked what it is. They said pickle. No. Okay, what pickle? Uh, thinking maybe mango pickle or something. They took out this cockroach pickle. <laughs> they were eating it. It's such joy and happiness. So nauseating. What one person likes, another person absolutely doesn't like. So with all this, we still have concluded that yoga, happiness is an object of enjoyment. Therefore, you have to understand what is happiness. To get the right understanding in the Gnana Yoga. And Gnana Yoga unravels the mystery and tells that happiness is not an object of enjoyment. It is an inner state of mind. An inner state of mind called as silence. So it goes into great depth of analysis, several levels of analysis. Finally, it says, actually observe what happens when you eat your gulab jamun, which you like most, and see what happens. You must do the whole process slowly so that you will not miss what is happening inside. Many times we miss because the things happen very fast. At our times, we used to watch floor gymnastics in Olympics. You know. The first girl comes and she running nicely and she jumps up eight feet above and comes down. Beautiful. The second one, ten feet. The third one, ten and a half feet. Everybody comes down. Such a marvelous jump they have and comes down. We are thrilled. But then the judges give for the first girl only six. Second girl, they give 
9.5. Third girl, they gave 8. You are wondering how? How could they judge? They keenly observe what is happening. The first girl who coming, coming little tense already and she is jumping with all the effort, she jumps up and then she is in the head, you could see her tension, nervousness when she comes, her right leg comes first, then the left leg and she is all imbalanced and somehow she is balanced. She gets only 4.5 or 5. The second girl comes with a beautiful smile on the face. She jumps up beautifully balanced. The whole thing lands like an aeroplane. She got 9.5. Since the judges were able to see accurately, observe very carefully, they were able to judge. Today we have the modern technology. We have the video recording. And take the video recording and slowly play back. In cricket we see now, you know, the person comes and bowls a beautiful googly and the person is trying to hit is out already. From a distance you cannot see, but in the TV you show how the person is coming slowly, is coming and turning and turning, how it went and the person is trying to hit, how it missed his bat or better, knocked off the bales, everything you see to enjoy so much. Therefore, many times the truth gets muddled up because it is too fast. Therefore, they say you have to slow down the process. Imagine you are taking a small bit of gulab jamun, you have recorded and put it into the mouth. What happens? Carefully observe. A small piece of gulab jamun going and entering into the taste buds. And when that gulab jamun turns your taste buds in the tongue, something mysterious happens. Not many visit. One you say, oh, very good, very good, very good, very nice, very tasty. But before that, what happened? When the gulab jamun touches your taste bud, it's called vishaya, vishayi sambhoga. The sense of that coming in touch with the sense, something mysterious happens. The mind becomes silent. All thought get obliterated. And the mind becomes absolutely silent. And that silent is what is called as bliss. Ananda by emotion. Ananda. But we don't recognize that. We don't have that subtlety of observation. And if you do that, in each Vishaya Vishaya Samboga, in all the sense pressures, whenever you have the sense of the coming in touch with the sense, the mind goes into that silence. And that is the mystery unraveled in the Grana Yoga. And this is what is used in Patanjali. It says, what is to be done? You have to completely silence your mind. And when you go on doing it, then your attractions to the sense pressures reduce. And this is the state of what is called Vairagya. So consciously you practice Vairagya. Once you start doing that, then your mind comes into the control. And how it has to be augmented? It has to be supported and complemented by the powerful process of pranayama. Pranayama is to gain mastery over the breathing. Gaining the mastery over the breathing, you gain control and mastery over the prana. And gaining mastery over the prana brings control and mastery over the mind. Prana and mind are two faces of the same coin. Once you control prana, you get control over the mind. Control the mind, you get control over the prana. So this in pranayama, you control the prana, thereby control the mind. As I saw, I told you how by using the body, we can get control over the mind. This are all the indirect ways. Therefore, I tell our friend from Michael, what you have to do to start doing the practice pranayama, slow deep breathing. No? Before you start, take a deep breath, slow deep breathe out, go on doing it. Two minutes, three minutes, you start doing that and you start reading. If the mind goes away again, start practicing. 
Every day in the morning, up to the evening, you start doing the practice of slowing up the breath. Within one week, he got wonderful concentration back. He was able to read everything. He was so happy, thrilled. This is the power of pranayama. When the mind becomes very haphazard, the breathing also becomes very haphazard. When he came, I measured what was his breathing rate. His breathing rate was very high. No? Almost 25, 26. Therefore, his mind was very jittery. Therefore, to control the mind, when you are not able to fix the mind in the dharana, the dhyana and others, you should slow down, slow down. That's the beauty. So let us contemplate on these thoughts. Sit tight, the eyes close. Relax all parts of the body from toes to head. Relax the facial muscles. Bring a beautiful smile on the face. Thank you. 